can't believe this is going to be my last fag ever. <laughs> you haven't changed your mind, have you? This isn't just about you, you know. It's about me and Joel. I and know, being... I know. I haven't changed my mind. I'm 34 and I've got a cough that makes me sound like I'm 70. I think it's about time I gave up. And someone's going to have to play footy with him in a couple of years. Somehow I don't think you've got what it takes. Thank you, David Beckham. <laughs> Morning. Morning. Morning, Jude. Morning, Katrina. Oh, welcome back. Um, sorry, this is Carly Hamada. She's been brought in as the second locum to cover people who, who go off sick and who are absent. Pleased to meet you, Carly. Hi. I've heard a lot about you. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Another busy morning for me. Yeah. Thanks, Katrina. Perhaps we could um, catch up over a coffee after morning surgery. Yeah. Good. She fitted in straight away. No, she's always early, and the, well, the patients, they love her. She's a good laugh as well when you get to know her. Yeah. That's great. Now, do you have any notes for me? Uh, yeah. Um, sorry, I didn't want to overload you on your first day back and everything. Thanks. Jude? Welcome back. Thanks. I can't believe we're off to the doctors again already. It's been 12 weeks. Seems like we only brought him home just the other day. Tell me about his flying by, that's for sure. You like seeing Dr Thompson, don't you? Hey, it was good of them to fit you in. Saves another trip. Did they say who I was seeing? Oh, I'm not sure. She mentioned someone being away. Might be a locum. Uh, don't matter. I'm only off to one thing, and I will be straight in and out. <sighs> we're very proud of you. So, how many cigarettes do you smoke on an average day? About a packet. And how long have you been a smoker? Since I was about 16. I used to sneak one of my dad's woodbines. And you've never had any heart problems or high blood pressure? No. As you're quite a heavy smoker, you'll most likely experience quite acute withdrawal symptoms. OK, well, I think we should start you on the strongest patches available. Whatever you say. But you must understand. You will need willpower and determination to kick them all together. No problem. I've made up my mind. I'm giving them up for good. Well, that's good to hear. Many smokers take several attempts to quit successfully. I've got a family to consider now. There are a few side effects associated with the patches that you should know about. Your sleep might be disturbed or you might experience some lightheadedness. I think I'll be able to deal with that. I'm sure you will. Now, you must not smoke while you're still wearing the patch. It can be particularly dangerous and could even... No need... worries there, Doc. Like I said, I'm giving them up for good. All things considered, I think Joel's progressing just perfectly. Unless anything else comes up, I'll see him again in a month's time. Um, there was one other thing. Yeah? It's my husband, Terry. He's, um, stopping smoking today. Really? Yeah, um, I was wondering if you had any ideas how I could make it easy for him. I mean, I've never been a smoker, but I know it can be awful trying to give up. Probably the best thing you can do is just be supportive and tolerate his mood. He's likely to become quite irritable. OK. Try and make a fuss of him. Perhaps give him something special. It might stem his feeling that he's been deprived of something he wants. And it will remind him that you appreciate what he's trying to do. <laughs> All right. I'll give it a try. How's my boy? Just perfect. Thanks again, Doctor. Bye now. Thank you, Doctor. I was wondering, has anybody given any thought to a theme for the Christmas party? God, I've hardly thought about Christmas at all. I don't know when I get my shopping done. Oh, sorry, I haven't had a chance. Well, I was thinking about fancy dress. What do you think? Oh, yeah, that sounds like fun. Hey, I could come as Marilyn. Happy birthday, Mr. President. Happy... Imagine it with a blonde wig. <laughs> Tell 
I told him I'd been about ten, which leaves me plenty of time to get to the chemist and get this filled in. You sure you feel okay so far? Yeah, I'd better be off. Mm. Mm. Bye bye, little man. Good luck. Yeah, see you later. Really? Bye. Uh, Dr. Thompson. Helen, what are your thoughts on the Christmas party? Surely you prefer something formal. Actually, the fancy dress idea was mine. I thought it might be fun. Ah, uh, Faith. We were just talking through some ideas on the Christmas party. What do you think? Fancy dress or something more formal? Say, cocktail party? Oh, I think fancy dress would be fun. I find the formal thing a bit stuffy myself. Don't know about everyone else, but I think Katrina would vote fancy dress. Yeah, well, no surprise there, then. So it seems fancy dress is in front so far. Ah, excellent. Thanks. Not bad, eh? But we've already got one. I know. And I thought the practice could do with something a bit grander, you know, a bit of a statement. Wow, that certainly makes a statement. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Katrina, there's a box of decorations in the staff room. If you could throw them on when you get a moment. On the tree, that is. <laughs> this is Jessup. Oh, yeah. So did they have to amputate or what? Not quite. <laughs> On the wagon, eh? So I'll expect a few tantrums, a few brushes chucked about. No. You'll never do it. Not in a million years. I bet you a week's wages you can't go for more than two days without one. You're on. All it takes is a bit of willpower. Willpower. You've been smoking ever since you could reach your dad's backpack. Yeah, and look where that got him. Sorry, mate, I wasn't thinking. No, it's true, though, isn't it? I watched my dad die from lung cancer, and what do I do? Keep right on smoking. How daft is that? Nah, I'm determined this time, mate. But I don't want to keel over by the time I'm 50. I've got a wife and kid to think about. You need to think about your lot, too. You are. Well, what are you going to tell Claire and the kids when I take your wages at the end of the week? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow, where did that come from? It was Mark's idea. <laughs> well, it's better than the other one. I wouldn't say that too loudly if I were you. Morning. Oh, hi. Had a lot of fun last night. Oh, yeah, me too. Oh, and um, thanks for taking me to that club. It's not my usual scene, but I had a great time. Sure. Well, um, I better get on. I'll see you later. Okay, see ya. Now, how would you like to help me make a treat for your daddy? Eh? Your daddy's been a very brave man today. He's given up smoking because of you. It's going to be very hard for him. It's going to be a bit tetchy for a day or two. Hmm? Even more tetchy than he already is? Mark, I'd like to speak with you if you have a moment. Sure. What's on your mind? This tree stunt. I just want you to know I'm fully aware of what you're trying to do. And what is that, exactly? The old one-upmanship. It's so transparent. I was just trying to make a contribution to the surgery. Bring in a bit of Christmas cheer. And your contribution just happens to be a more grandiose version of the one I've already made. Don't you think you're being a bit paranoid? Not everything I do in this surgery is in direct opposition to you. Well, it's beginning to feel that way. Um, I'm sorry to interrupt. That's all right, Katrina. What is it? Um, it it's just a message from Jude. She wants everyone to meet here at the end of morning surgery. Apparently she's got something to say to us. Thank you. Is that all? Uh, no, um, there's... Uh, Mark, you're 10.40, Mr Gill. He's arrived. Thank you. You'll excuse me. That it biting your fingernails yet? You want to watch it and earn yourself a sap by the end of the day. I tried giving up once, you know. Yeah, yeah. Just decided. After I smoked the last fag in the packet, I just thought, that's it. I'm giving these up. So how long did you last? <laughs> Till 7 30 the next morning. Oh, ho de ho ho. Terry! Hello, love. What are you doing here? Thought you might like some dinner. Hey, you're covered in paint. Blimey. Sandwiches, chocolate cake. What's the occasion? I 
thought you might be feeling a bit out of sorts. Maybe you could do with a bit of a treat. Late into work and you're getting your dinner delivered. Who's a lucky boy then? Hey, I won't share. There's plenty for both of you. Thanks for this, love. You're great, you are. You deserve it. Anyway, I'll see you later. Bye, Keith. See you, Sarah. Oh, no dodgy cat for us today, mate. I know you're all very busy, so um, thank you for taking the time out. I wanted to apologise for my recent... Uh, it's OK. <clears throat> I wanted to apologise for... Okay. I wanted to apologise for my recent absence. I know that it caused a lot of upheaval and I put you under a lot of pressure. So I wanted to say thank you for keeping things together and for being so understanding. Or should I say tolerant. I realised that my behaviour was irresponsible and not knowing where I was or when I was coming back in probably made the practice look bad. I can't imagine what my patients must have thought. Um, I... The other side surgery? I had some personal problems that I had to deal with. Now, I know that's not much of an excuse because we've all got our own stuff that we have to deal with, but I shouldn't have let it get in the way. And uh, I'm really sorry for dropping you all in it. Anyway, I've sorted things out now, and from now on, I will be pulling my weight and work will take top priority. And I promise this won't happen again. Well, that's all I really needed to say, so thanks for listening. Uh, sorry, can you say that last bit again? <laughs> Give it a rest, you git. Perhaps I should do me smoking somewhere else for a bit, eh? Right. I'm off to news agents. Put lottery on. Do you want anything? No, I'm fine. And don't be long. You're the boss. So she didn't say anything about the wedding? No. Well, is it on or not? I don't know. She didn't mention it. She just talked about some personal problems, that's all. But we're all invited to the wedding. Between you and me, I think it's all off. Guess I'll be collecting a few bets then. I'm telling you, boss, you want to make the most of me? When my numbers come up tonight, I'm straight off to the Bahamas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> telling you, you won't see me for dust. How's the first day back going? Oh, not bad. Just uh, lots of paperwork to sort out. That was very brave of you, the apology. I know everyone appreciated it. Well, they deserved it, considering the way I've acted. Tell me to stay out of it if you like, but are things really that settled for you now? Yeah. Things couldn't get more settled, really. And things with Pete? I've uh, called it off. We're not getting married anymore. Is he all right? Uh, he's stable, but he still hasn't regained consciousness. In terms of injury, he's received a broken arm, and we're going to do a cranial scan to assess whether he's sustained any brain damage. Brain damage? Is that likely? Well, his head did connect with the ground, quite heavily, from what we can ascertain. Until we do a scan, we can't rule anything out. I'm sorry I don't have any more hopeful news at the moment. I suppose it's better than no news. It would help us to know if Terry had any pre-existing condition that may have caused the accident. Do you know if he'd experienced any blackouts or dizzy spells before? No, never. Oh, and um, we found a, yeah, a nicotine patch on his arm. Do you know how long he'd been using the patches? He only started on them this morning. Do you think they've got something to do with it? 
But if you still love Pete... It's precisely because I do love him that I can't be with him. I know it doesn't seem to make any sense. No, it doesn't. Pete deserves someone that can commit to him without any complications or any strings attached. And I can't do that. I don't see why not. What's so wrong with you? <sighs> a marriage should enhance the lives of both people. It should be the best thing to ever happen to them. Now, if Pete were to marry me, it would ruin his life. And I don't want to be responsible for that. No, I'm sorry to interrupt, but there's a call for you from Sarah Morris. She's ringing from the hospital. It's about her husband, Terry. Sounds in quite a state. Oh, right. Put her through, then. OK. I'll leave you to it, then. OK. Hello? Is that Dr Carlyle? Yes, it is. How can I help you? Terry's had an accident. He's unconscious. Is there anything I can do? The doctors here think it's because of the nicotine patches you gave him. Really? Well, what did they say exactly? I'm going to be making a complaint to the health authority. About you. Oh, shit. I've got to go to St Phil's. Bad news. I see that. Jude? I prescribed a patient some nicotine patches this morning. He's had an accident and his wife thinks it's because of the patches. She wants to make a complaint against me. Better get down there and sort it out then, didn't you? Yes, thank you. That's exactly what I am doing. First day back, not going too well for poor Jude, is it? Sarah? He's still unconscious. He's got a broken arm and they say he might have brain damage. Who did you speak to? Dr Green. Right, I'll go and try and find her and see if I can find out any more. I should just tell you the same thing. He fell because of those patches you gave him. I know they may think the patches might have contributed might to... Might have? You know as well as I do it was those patches. Or do you rush over to visit all your patients in hospital? Terry's regained consciousness. Can I see him? It'll have to be a short visit. We still need to run some tests. I thought Helen was going to rip his head off. Excuse me, ladies. Cool. There's me wondering what's going on with Jude. When all the time I'm missing the juiciest gossip of all. What's that, then? You and your lovely Loken. Come on. There's no gossip to be had. Oh, please don't play coy with me. Come on, give me all the details. Nothing's happening. Really? Really. Oh, I think he likes me, but... just not sure. Sure what? Well, we've snogged, but... I'll... But, but you haven't... No. Oh. I don't know what to think. Normally it's me trying to fight a guy off, but... I wonder if he's just not interested and he can't bring himself to say it. What? Maybe he's just playing hard to get. How does it feel to have the shoe on the other foot for a change? I reckon it's broken. If that's the worst of it, we're lucky. I was... At Mum's. Oh. <laughs> I'm so glad you're awake. Don't really remember what happened. I remember being on the ladder and then getting real dizzy all of a sudden. Do you remember me visiting at dinner time? Oh, you had a chocolate cake. <laughs> it was wicked, love. Thanks. Hi. Sorry to bother you now, Terry, but I need to know if you've had an attack like this in the past. No. The patches may have contributed to the fall, but I just need to know if there were any other factors involved. Did you take any other medication? Or were you overexerting yourself? Well, it's all a bit of a blur, but I didn't take anything else. We'd finished lunch and Keith went somewhere. Oh, yeah, to get a lottery ticket. And then... And then? And then I read the paper for a bit and went back to work. Nothing out of the ordinary. Tree's looking nice, Katrina. 
I've already decorated one. I'm not paid to mess around with tinsel all day. Yes, well, we need to get rid of this thing anyway. How about putting it back in the staff room? I don't think that's such a good idea after yesterday. I don't know. Now we've got a replacement, I'm sure Helen wouldn't mind. Wouldn't I? Helen! I was just saying to Katrina, now we've got the bigger tree, I'm sure you wouldn't mind putting the other one back in the staff room. I suppose not. Yes, well, it doesn't make sense having them both out here, does it? Perhaps not. Mind you, one disadvantage of a real tree is that it inevitably dries out and drops pine needles everywhere. Given the amount of children and toddlers we have in the waiting area, it might be a hazard. Mm, got a good point there. I mean, they'll try and eat anything, won't they? Perhaps we should put your tree in the staff room. You sure you did nothing out of the ordinary? No. Can you stop trying to put the blame on something else? Terry's been up and down ladders for years. This has never happened before. It was that damn patch you gave him made him fall. Look, not it's happened all right. There's no point in trying to blame anyone. Sarah, there is a risk of adverse side effects with any medication, but we can't predict the exact effect for every individual patient. What sort of cop-out is that? Did you even ask Terry what his job was? Did you know he worked on a ladder? I didn't ask him about his occupation, no. But if I'd have known he'd be working at heights, I would have given him an express warning, but I did explain but to him... But you didn't, did you? Come on, Sarah, leave it. I won't leave it, Terry. What if you'd been working higher up on that ladder? My son could be without a father because she didn't do her job properly. It wasn't the doctor's fault, love. Whose fault was it, then? All I've heard since you've come in here is excuses. You're trying to put the blame on Terry. It's not going to stop me, you know. I'm still going to make that complaint. A complaint? Now, hang on a minute. All he wanted was help to stop smoking. And look what you've done to him. Don't I get a say in this? It was me who fell off the ladder. It was me who nearly broke my neck. It was her who gave you the patches. But I'm going to be OK. I'm going to be all right. Yeah, but she could have killed you. Leave it, Sarah. Sarah. I'm going to get a cup of tea. I'm sorry, love. I'll be back in a minute. Doctor. I'm sorry about this mess. It's not your fault, Terry. It was an accident. All right, judgment. So stupid. Shouldn't have done it. Done what, Terry? I smoke one of my mate's fags. While you were wearing the patch? Yeah. Well, he went for his lottery ticket and just left them there in front of me. I just had to have one. I fail to see how a few pine needles constitute a health hazard. A child's far more likely to choke on a bit of plastic from that thing. There are also allergy sufferers to think about. A lot of people are allergic to cypress trees. Don't you think you're being a bit petty about this? Mark, may I remind you, I wasn't the one that insisted on bringing a second tree when we already had one that was more than adequate. This is a doctor's surgery, not a shopping mall. I can't believe you're trying to score points from a Christmas tree, of all things. You're getting paranoid again. Perhaps we should continue this another time. Fine. After you. I think we should throw both trees away. I think we should cancel Christmas. People underestimate how hard it is to give up. It's an addiction like anything else. But I promised Sarah. I wanted to do it for her and Joel. Just couldn't help myself. You were smoking? You couldn't go one day without a cigarette? I just nicked one of Keith's. But you were doing so well. You said you felt fine. You promised me, Terry. I couldn't help myself. I just needed one. I think it was the smoking of the cigarette that caused the fall. It certainly explains the dizziness. Combined, the patch and the cigarette would deliver a huge dose of nicotine to the bloodstream at once. I'm so sorry, Dr Carlyle. I was just so upset. When they told me it might be the patches, I just... Just as long as we've got to the bottom of it. No real damage done. I feel awful. All those things I said, I'm sorry. Right, I better get back to the surgery. I'm just glad we've sorted all this out. Thank you, Doctor. Bye-bye. I'm really sorry, love. At least you're still in one piece. 
I will give up, you know. I do want to. I know. I'll just have to keep my eye on you in future. Oh. Just doing a bit of late housekeeping. Didn't realise you were there. Thought I was the only one here. Well, I've got quite a bit of catching up to do. No sense of putting it off now that I'm back. Sounds like a good idea. Paperwork will eat you alive if you let it. Mm. It's good to have you back. Thanks. It's good to be back. And I hope it gets better, whatever it is that you're dealing with. I'm sure it will eventually. Thank you. It's amazing, isn't it? The way your past follows you around. Oh, yes. Always finding new and excruciating ways of letting you know it's there. Oh. Have you had any little demons visit you lately? My mother made an appointment to see me yesterday. My real mother. Was it okay? It ended badly. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you see any way to go forward with it? Well, to be honest, I don't know if I want to. I don't know if I've got the strength. I'm sure you do. You know, suddenly I have absolutely no idea how to handle this. I've been wanting to make contact with her for so long. But now I don't know if I can. Well, if that's what you want. Oh, it is. I know I'm never going to feel really normal or complete until I've got to know her somehow or other, but... Now, I don't know if I can take the risk. I think there's a risk involved whenever we get close to someone. Sometimes you've just got to take that chance. Perhaps. But this woman's already rejected me once. What if she does it again? I don't think I could handle it a second time. <laughs> 